Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. This is part 2 of the Hitman Far Cry-esque detection system which we were creating in the last episode. That one was the last video I uploaded so if you haven't seen that I definitely say watch that before this one and I'll leave a link to that in the description down below and on screen now as well. So as I said in that one this was originally just one video which I split up into two in editing so I'm actually recording this intro after doing the rest of the video so it might sound a little bit unnatural when going into it. But what we're doing today is setting up the final part, which is the character so the AI can actually detect and stop detecting us and then fill up the progress bar so the meter on screen and chases and all that good stuff. So we're really just finishing off and finalizing everything in today's video. So without further ado, I'll stop talking and I'll get back into the rest of the video, which we started in the last one. And now we're going to open up our player blueprint to actually do the code for that slow detection and slow stopping detection. So for me, that's third person blueprints. BP third person character, but for you it could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. Now first things first in here, we want to create a reference to the widget we created with our indicator on there. So we're going to hold down P and left click to get event begin play. If that doesn't work for you, that means you've already used it, so you can right click and search for begin play. It should take you to it, then you can hold down S, left click to get a sequence, with then zero going to the code you've already got, and then one going to the code we're about to do but I haven't used it yet, so I don't need to do that. Out of event begin play, what we're gonna do is very simply create widget with the class being the widget we created earlier. So again, for me, that's detection widget. The return value, we're gonna to promote to a variable and I'm gonna name this one very simply detection widget, very imaginative name. And out of this, we're going to simply add to viewport. So all we're doing is creating reference to the widget and putting it on screen. So we'll compile and save that. And this has also reminded me, we do need to change one small thing inside of the widget. So let's open it back up again, like so. Well, that's the interface, sorry. <laughs> open the widget, select the progress bar, and all we need to do is make sure that the visibility is by default set to hidden. So we're not gonna see this on the screen by default. We need to actually show it for obviously when the AI is detecting us. So we'll compile, save, and close that, going back to the character blueprint. This is all we need to do off of event begin play. So let's now start the detection code again. So we'll just find some empty space in our event graph and we need to obviously get access to our functions from the interface. So we're gonna go up to class settings the same way we did in the AI, add an interface, adding our detection interface, compiling and saving, and we've obviously now got access to this interfaces tab and our four different functions here. We only want to use start and stop detection. So we're gonna double click these to get them in like so. Let's just move stop detection out of the way as we're only doing start to begin with. So you'll notice we've also got reference to the AI so we can see which AI is actually detecting us, which is important later on for when we want to make it chase us. So what we're gonna do first is this is gonna be called once the AI has seen us. So we want to then put the indicator on screen. So we're gonna get a reference to our widget. Out of this, we're going to get our progress bar. Now you may have named it something if you have search for whatever you named it. And out of this, we're going to get is visible, like so. And we're doing this just because again, we want to see whether we need to or don't need to put this on screen. So let's hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that into there, like so. And if this is false, so it's not visible, we want to put it on screen. So let's drag out the progress bar again and set visibility, connecting that into false and setting the in visibility to visible, perfectly like so, so we can now see it, it is now on screen. And if it's true, if it's already visible, we don't need to put it back on screen, but we also don't want to remove it because again, this is for when we do see the player. So what we're gonna do instead is come out of true and we're going to add a timeline. I'm gonna name this one fill detection meter, like so. And that's gonna go into play, not play from start, but into play. And the set visibility will also go into play like so. So they're both gonna go into this timeline. And we're using a timeline so we can then smoothly fill in and empty the meter icon that we created in our widget. So let's double click this to open it up. And the length in here, we're gonna to set to how long we want it to take to fill and empty our icon. So for me, I set this to three seconds at the start of the video, as I think that's a good length. It's not too long and it's not too short, but you can obviously set this to whatever you like. You can make it really long, you make it really short, or just slightly different to what I've got. Obviously just set the length up there for what you want. Then we'll add a track, adding a float track, name this whatever you want, I'm gonna name it detection track as that makes the most sense. Then we'll right click, 
add key to curve float with a time of zero and a value of zero. So at the very beginning, right click, add another key with a time of the maximum length of your timeline, which for me is three, and then a value of one. So we're going from the beginning to the end of the timeline. We can compile and save that and then close the timeline tab like so. And you'll notice we now have access to this track we just created, which is gonna be spitting out a value between zero and one nice and smoothly so it's going to be smoothly going from 0 to 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 0 0.3 all the way up to 1 very nicely very very nicely and this detection track value here is going to actually be setting the percentage of our progress bar because progress bar also goes from 0 to 1 so this works perfectly for us that will then be filling or emptying our progress bar based upon this timeline so what we're going to do is drag out of our progress bar once again here and then set percent like so connecting this into update of the timeline. So every time the timeline updates, it's also gonna be updating the percentage in our progress bar, which the player will be able to see as we put it on screen over here as well. Then we're just gonna connect in the detection track into the in percent there, and that will then work perfectly. It will fill up our progress bar. But now how do we also empty it when the AI stops seeing the player? Well, that's very simple. All we need to do is just reverse the timeline. So if we were to get our event stop detection, we can just connect that into reverse there like so. However, there's one thing we want to do before this. We want to stop the timeline and then start reversing it because otherwise it's just gonna continue filling up. So what we need to do is just disconnect this very quickly. Under our variables, we have components. If we open components, we can get a reference to our timeline here. We'll drag in our timeline. Out of this, just simply get stop. It's that simple. It's gonna then stop the timeline. And now we can go into reverse of the timeline to be able to reverse it and empty it instead of filling it up. It's obviously referring to our progress bar. So I hope that will make sense as to why we're doing what we're doing. We can compile and save, and now we're gonna be filling up and emptying our progress bar perfectly like so. However, there's obviously a few more things we want to actually do to this. So we also want to make sure it goes red when it's full, and then it will also start chasing the player. And if it starts draining, once it's empty, we want to make sure the AI stops chasing us if it was, and we also want to make sure it goes back to white if it was red. So that's also very simple. What we're going to do is come out of the direction enum on the timeline and get a switch on E timeline direction, and that will go into finished. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to do something different depending on if we are filling or emptying the timeline. So this allows us to do that because obviously forward and backwards we're doing different things for us. So we want them to do different things when we finish it as well. Forward means we are filling it up so if we finish while we're going forward, that means the AI has now fully detected and seen us. So what we want to do is go back to our event start detection, and we now want to get a reference to our AI. We're gonna drag out of this and get chase. So start chase message like so, connecting that into not set percent, sorry, into forward of the switch on E timeline direction. Let me just double click this to get some root nodes to keep it nice and organized once again putting this all the way back over here. Now let's go back and we started the chase. And like I say, I also want to make sure that this goes red. You obviously don't need to do that, but I think it's just a nice feature, which is also in the games as well. So what we're gonna do is come out of the progress bar once again, which is this blue line here. And then we're going to just simply set fill color and opacity, connect that into there like so. And I'm gonna set the fill color or the in color, sorry, just to red. A nice simple red color like so. Let me also just set that one there. And that's gonna be fine for me. I don't need anything else too fancy. Just a nice red color works perfectly fine. And then we're just gonna move this up a little bit just so we have some room for what we're about to do now. As what we're about to do now is we're then going to do the code for when it finishes when we're draining the meter. So that's obviously off of backwards. Off of backward, we want to get a re-triggerable delay like so. I'm just gonna move this fully out of the way for a minute and I'll come back to it later. We want to get a retriggerable delay and I'm gonna set the duration to 0.5. You can set this to whatever you like, but this is basically just the duration for when the AI stops detecting us fully, so it stops seeing us completely and how long it is after that until the icon then comes off screen. So half a second after the AI stops seeing us, I want the meter to disappear off the screen. So that's why I've got 0.5 you can obviously set this to absolutely whatever you like. Let me just now move this down here like so, as that's gonna be good for me. And actually, I'll just connect that straight in there like this. Now after this, what we're going to do is I said, obviously we're hiding the detection meter now. 
So we're going to drag out of our progress bar once again, which I've got here nicely. And we're just going to simply set visibility, connecting that into the delay. And we're going to set this to be hidden so we can no longer see it. Let me just drag this down like so, perfectly like this. And so that is now going to work. However, obviously, if the AI was chasing us, this now means we want them to stop chasing us. So what we're going to do is come out of our AI reference, which we have up here, and then call stop chase the message from the interface we once again created earlier, connecting that into stop chase there. And obviously, if they were chasing us, that means the widget is going to be red. So we want to set it back to white or whatever color you had it as. So we're going to get the set fill color and opacity once again, connecting in the target correctly like so as well, obviously being the progress bar. So this is very similar to what we just did up above. We're obviously just inversing it now. The end color for me, again, is going to be white. Now, if you set it to a specific color, you can obviously reopen your widget and just copy and paste the hex code from there into here. So you have the exact same color. And if we compile and save that, that should now be the code completely done and working for us. We've set up the AI site detection and stop detection in both the AI and the character, and that's obviously going to fill and drain our widget accordingly. So if we were to close this and hit play to test it out, we can see if this is actually working after we've actually obviously put the AI in the level. So let's drag the AI in the level, place him over here, rotate him around so we're looking at him like so. And also, if you haven't already, you need to make sure you get in a nav mesh, so that's under volumes, nav mesh bound volume like so. And if you hit P, you can see if it's working because the floor should be green where the AI can actually move, as you can see on my screen now. I hit P again to disable that, and now let's hit play to test this out. So if I to walk in front of it, it appears on screen, starts filling up. If I hide, it's going to start going down again. If I to let this fill all the way up, you'll notice it should then turn to red, and it should start chasing us. However, you'll notice it hasn't actually started chasing us, but if I were to disappear from here again, it will start going down, still red, and then it disappears. If I go back out, it will start filling up as white again. So everything is working perfectly fine, apart from the fact it isn't actually chasing us. So let's have a look at why that's happening. I imagine that's a problem in the AI code itself. Let's also open up our character to check that too. And I've noticed the issue, it's my bad. When I was connecting in the target actor for, for the AI to go to earlier, I accidentally connected it into pawn. So this line here going from pawn, that needs to go into target actor and self needs to go into pawn which I believe I did connect that in, but then I obviously just overwrit it by mistake. So I'll compile, save, close that. Now it should all be working, that was just my bad. So let's test this again. If I were to just stay in sight, it should then start chasing us like so. And if I were to hide, it's gonna stop, although I should really make that a lot slower so we have time to actually hide from it. So let's open the character movement and just lower the max walk speed to let's say 150. That's what I had at the start of the video. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set up a system in which you can see when the AI can see us, a progress bar is gonna fill above our head for a sight detection, and it will then drain when it can't see us again. And if we were to let it to fill all the way up, it will turn to red and the AI will start chasing us. And once we hide, it's obviously gonna go down until they can't see us and it will stop chasing us like so. And then it will work again once they start seeing us, as you can see perfectly on screen here. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.